proceduralize and parameterize that whole thing. And, uh, and the way we wound up doing it was making these little particle agents that can crawl over the surface of a creature. Why don't you pop to a couple of those? Um, and uh, in, in various combinations, um, paint different components of the creature. So we, uh, we had to figure out how to make texture artists um, uh, that the player could basically invoke. Uh, and the texture artists would kind of crawl over the little creature and say, oh, I think this would be a good spot to put stripes, or this would be a good spot for legs. The early prototypes look like a potato being hit by a meteor shower of paintball pellets <laughs> yeah. and just spreading in, in like little rivers over this potato and creating yeah, these textures. But you, you have to reason about the parts. You have to reason about the creature. Like, where's its spine? Where's its belly? Where's its legs? And these little particles have to crawl over and do the right thing in the right spot. So that was a hard problem. And we worked on it for a good six months or so. Chris Hecker was the guy that did the initial prototyping of that. Um, and now um, we've got a really good texture artist who's doing all these textures, but he's not using <laughs> Photoshop. He's using Notepad, which is just freaky. Um, and uh, This is um, Mr. Lunch. Yeah, this was, this was an early idea about like, hmm, um, for the texture treatment, do we want to go kind of cartoony or do we want to go more realistic? And this one was kind of like the stuffed animal that was run over by a car and nobody really liked it very not, much. Not cute. <laughs> Mangy. But this is also distributing geometry as the yeah. textures were distributed. Yeah, that, that was, once, once you have these little particles that can reason about the surface and decide what goes where, then you can sort of break down where, well, where might you want hair to go and where might you want to put little details on it. So that's creatures, creature texturing, there's a whole bunch of stuff there, but um, I've only got three minutes left, two minutes left. We had to do the same thing with, uh, with vehicles. Um, the, the kind of all the cars and boats and airplanes and stuff like that that populate the world are also made by the player. So we had our uh, Christian Schur, our concept artist, do us a whole bunch of ideas for what vehicles might look like. And then we had to decompose those into a, a, a pretty vast library of parts. Um, we tried experiments with kind of walking robots with all kinds of, hold on this one for, on this one for a sec. Um, and so um, we eventually wound up with this, this library of blocks that transform and, uh, and distort in various ways so that uh, so you kind of got magic Lego blocks. You can sort of put them down on the ground and distort them. And we tried to figure out how to get the maximum breadth of aesthetic range for the player in the sense of toy like playing with it out of the minimum number of parts and the minimum number of interactions. And so these are just examples of vehicles that, um, that were built in our editor out of you know, basically the same library of deforming parts. We've got you know, maybe 80, 60, 80 parts. And you can make vehicles that are kind of cool looking with them. And uh, we're still doing the kind of the same procedural texturing thing. We have to uh, chart the thing. We have to do ambient occlusion. We have to do all these things that you would get uh, an artist to do manually, normally. Um, and we have to do it when the, the, the player saves it. And so we've got, again, on the order of like, you know, 500 milliseconds or so to take this thing that the player's made and turn it into a game asset, a rigged, animated game asset with all the metadata that the game needs to make it work. And we try to get a wide range of stylistic breadth there too, you know, from things that are like quite realistic battleships and tanks to crazy chitty chitty bang bang vehicles and slug vehicles and stuff like that. Um, and um, some, now we some can't, we can never ship that, of course. <laughs> but uh, we, have, we have a lot of targets where I want to make the Enterprise, but we can't make the Enterprise, but we want to make sure that somebody else can make the Enterprise. <laughs> um, and uh, Mike Corey is an artist who was in charge of all that and did really beautiful work with 